This video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies, and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin has very low fees, lower than many of the other crypto exchanges in the market. You can also stake your cryptocurrencies and keep 100% of the rewards. There are no fees. Other exchanges charge fees. OKCoin allows you to keep 100% of the rewards. Sign up with OKCoin, link in the description. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news and interviews. With me today is Halsey Miner, who's the founder of CNET, as well as the CEO of Live Planet, which is the operator of the Video Coin Network. Halsey, great to have you on. Great to be on. I apologize. My, my voice is a little hoarse. Uh, well, we can hear you pretty well. Um, you know, I'm always fascinated by folks such as yourself, entrepreneurs and folks who are part of the growth of the internet. And now you're here in crypto and, and the whole blockchain NFT movement. Uh, but before we get to all the details of VideoCoin, let's talk about your background. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? So I grew up in Virginia. Um, I went to uh, New York and um, uh, worked in investment bank, actually had a partnership with Jeff Bezos for a year. Um, I started CNET Networks there. Uh, I moved CNET out to, out to California, San Francisco. Um, I built it into a NASDAQ 100 uh, company. Um, I left, I was the co-founder and second largest shareholder of, uh, uh, of Salesforce for the first seven years. So. I left CNET in January and Salesforce launched in February. Um, while at CNET, uh, we created the software that basically the industry used to do web publishing. It was called Vignette and the product was called Story Server. And that became an $11 billion company and CNET made $1.5 billion. And that kind of helped us be a NASDAQ winner company. Um, and, um, actually started a search engine that was bought by NBC that was called NBCI and was in the top 15 websites of the country. Um, but after the four and a half year period where I helped Salesforce, like I rang the bell on the New York Stock Exchange, I, got, I went off the board. Um, and then I started uh, Google Voice, well, so it was called Grand Central, now it's Google Voice, uh, a company called OpenDNS that was bought by, um, uh, that was bought by um, Cisco, um, a couple of other companies. And then in crypto, I started the company called Uphold, uh, which many people may be familiar with. Um, we were about 15 months behind uh, Coinbase and getting a bank account. So we would be Coinbase if we had been as lucky, lucky as they were <laughs> to find somebody who would <laughs> who would give us a bank account to buy crypto. It was a very, very hard thing to do back then. And how they did it, I still don't fully understand. Um, but I have six companies worth more than $3 billion. The total is $270 billion right now. And the number of people who visit websites have started is $350 million a, mo a month. So I've done a lot of different things in a lot of different industries. Got very excited about crypto in 2012. Um, wanted to solve the hardest problem, which is how do you buy crypto? Um, mm -hmm. That's still a hard problem. So, you know, there are all kinds of things like stable coins and others that have been introduced to try to solve that problem. <clears throat> so, um, you know, spent uh, three or four years on, uh, on, on building up whole, which is now a multi-billion dollar business. And, um, and then, uh, and then started what's you know now video coin, um, and so we started out building video infrastructure to compete with um, AWS and, and and others, and and realized that there's a much bigger bigger business turning this into an application um, that allows for NFTs, and those NFTs can include video. Um, and it's a very focused kind of thing. It can be a very big app. Um, and it's much easier to sell than just a, a plain old platform that goes up against AWS. So it's given us a really, really big opportunity now um, in the emerging NFT space, which you know, I think is just, just beginning. 
Wow, such an impressive resume, uh, and it's certainly an honor to speak to you. You're, you're certainly a pioneer in the internet days. So let's go back to CNET. Um, what led to the genesis of that idea in, in wanting to start that company? Yeah, you know, all of the really old school internet people like me and Jerry Yang who started Yahoo, we, we had no idea the internet was going to be such a big, we knew it was going to be big, but we didn't know it was going to be profitable big. Sure. And, uh, and I um, was a junkie reading computer magazines. And I realized that the internet, well, I actually, I actually had two things. I wanted to start a cable channel and I, then I wanted to start an internet site. And um, and I realized that the internet was great for computers because um, the information changes so fast. Like, you know, just the prices in the magazines, but by the time they get sold, it's three months after the editorial is done. And, um, and so everything's wrong. And so I realized that the internet would be a much bigger, uh, would be a much bigger, plat better platform. Now we ended up also launching five TV shows, four on USA and sci-fi, one on CNBC called news.com and it was their tech news show. Um, Ryan Seacrest's first two TV shows were, were with us. <laughs> um, and so and so we did do TV, we just, um, um, you know, we were just about computing and the whole idea of starting a cable network kind of went to the wayside because that was a $300 million, you know, thing. And I could start a website for not a lot of money um, and sort of, you know, build the company much more organically. Um, but, but we launched in April of, uh, uh, we launched in April of 1995 and we were the first company to build a website out of a database. Uh, hence the creation of the software that we later kind of spun out. Now let's let's fast forward to uh, when did you first discover Bitcoin and crypto, and what was your aha moment that this is this is has this has legs and it's here to stay? So it's really interesting because I had a hard, you know, crypto is very difficult to understand what the token's value is. That's why it's evolved, all right. Hmm. And when I when I did my, my business plan for Uphold, I showed <clears throat> that in a six month period, it went from $40 to $270 back down to $70. And the, the launch of Uphold um, allowed you to convert your Bitcoin into 15 different currencies. And since we didn't have a, since we didn't have a bank account, what we were is a haven from volatility. And, um, and I had, I had another idea, and, and, I, and I really wish it, it caught on. But, you know, people were kind of thinking about Bitcoin as a, as a form of payments. Um, but the volatility was so difficult that, you know, you can't, you take on how you can't be in Bitcoin because, um, you know, you could lose half your money in, you know, in a week. But we built this really cool thing where you could hold your money in, in 15 different currencies. And then you could take a Bitcoin address um, and you could convert your money in, in fiat dynamically into Bitcoin and send it over to, uh, to wherever it is you're buying. So, so Bitcoin can be the, the, the piece in between um, holding money in fiat and, and, and actually creating the transactions. And, and I wish that idea cut along because it, it would have made Bitcoin a more useful form of payments, uh, you know, when you're, um, um, uh, you know, when you're when you're shopping, for instance. So, so, um, so anyway, you know, when I saw two people send Bitcoin across the table and um, to each other with no bank account, you know, and I realized that that couldn't be done any other way. Uh, it was the um, it was the technology. <clears throat> As a technologist, um, it was really the technology that you know I thought was so remarkable, right? This ability to simultaneously send money around. It's like you know you can't experience that and not realize how different that is than every other way of moving money around in the in the system, and. And so, you know, like I said, that was that was kind of the 
the idea behind uh, Uphold until we could finally get uh, bank accounts. But, you know, Uphold is still, you know, the only place where you can have, you know, 30 fiat currencies, five metals, a whole bunch of crypto tokens, and you can go from any to any. So you can go from palladium to Ethereum, or you can go from, you know, the Euro to, uh, you know, some some random coin yeah. that, that they have, right? And uh, it's it's literally thousands of pairs. Um, and so they ended up with a with a really neat kind of business because of you know their ability to just sort of convert anything to anything. Yeah, I, I'm a big Uphold fan. I've been using it for years, um, and it was one of the exchanges that I was easily able to purchase different cryptocurrencies. Um, are you still a part of Uphold, and and are you working with them on anything that is new that you can share? No, I uh, <laughs> um, I was um, I think I was it was uh, chairman of the board until something like 2017. Um, and then I became just very busy and, um, and, uh, and, and left, left the company. I, um, I still talk to them uh, all the time about new features, particularly when they do something I like. Um, they, they've really, in the last like two or three years, they've become much better at marketing. Um, the, uh, you know, they've taken advantage of the fact that people want to trade. You know, I, I had told them, in like 2016 or 2017, they should, you know, when all they have a Bitcoin is just, just take the top 25 to, uh, tokens, make them easy, easy to buy, make it easy to get money in your bank, you have a huge business. Um, and, um, you know, ultimately they've sort of done that plus some. Um, and so, and so, uh, yeah, they, you know, they've, they've built quite a large business for themselves. Now, um, You've seen the kind of the birth and the the young days of the internet, and now you're of course in crypto. Are there any comparisons that you see between the two? And um, you, you know what, what nuggets or inform you know comparisons given your perspective that you can share? Well, I mean, look, there's you know crypto was a bubble. You know things had very very large valuations. Um, I mean, the, the early internet was a bubble and had very large valuations. I, I think that's part of crypto. There are, you know, things that rise up and then come running right back down, uh, even Bitcoin itself. Um, so it's, it's kind of like an ongoing bubble. You know, it's like one thing goes up and then it goes down and other things, uh, Bitcoin goes up to 60,000 and then it comes back to, you know, down 20,000. So, so, you know, the early internet was just like, it was just kind of a straight line up and then a straight line down. Mm. Um, Bitcoin is just punctuated with these, you know, these constant. And, um, you know, there was, there was nothing like a hodler for, uh, for internet. Um, when I left CNET, it was a $68 stock. And two and a half years later, it was a 68 cent stock. Um, it was it was worth the company was worth less than the cash they had on their hand because when the internet melted down everything melted down like nobody wanted to touch it um, and and this doesn't have that you know you constantly ask their bull markets but people just wait for the bull markets the to, you know the bear markets for the bull markets so in that way it's different I think in one way that it's the same is a lot of people don't know what the things are that actually work. Mm. Um, and um, I, I think we still are finding things that are uh, uses of the technology that are, that are actually good uses. I would say NFTs is definitely the internet kind of stumbled on, on something that's a, that's a good use case for, um, for, for internet, for, um, for um, blockchain technology. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of experimentation going on, a lot of experimentation going on. Um, a lot of these things probably won't turn into anything. Um, sure. You know, that's kind of the way it is. Um, some things with huge valuations may not turn into anything, you know, um, but that's exactly the way kind of the, uh, the internet was. But, but, you know, like the early internet, 
there's a, you know, the good thing is, is that the financial rewards are such that you get a lot of, um, you get a lot of innovation. Um, a lot of people focused on it now. Now I wish the government knew that, but, um, but um, you know, things attract, things, things attract a lot of money. People are smart. Things attract um, um, areas um, with a lot of money. The reward areas with a lot of money, if they actually have benefit, people aren't stupid. So, you know, after the internet crashed, you know, um, people would call people like me dot commerce, like, and it was, it was like a, it was like, you know, nothing on the internet work. It was all a big scam, you know, and that's what people feel, you know, and it's like, I'm so glad I didn't get involved in that because such a scam. And I mean, can you imagine, you know, not having the internet today? And I mean, there are people just yeah. jumping up and down and crashed because they, uh, you know, I told you so. I told you this would never turn into the internet. If they told you these prices were too high, you know. Um, so, you know, but in this, um, you know, the people who've made the most money um, these days have been willing to hang in there through some very, very hairy times. Like, you yeah. had to have a, almost a religious zeal in order mm -hmm. for you to hold on to um, tokens during these just incredible volatile highs and, and lows. Um, but people aren't stupid. And the reason there's money here and it keeps getting bigger and the valuation gets bigger is that there are, you know, in time, there'll be, you know, lots of applications of the technology that will matter. And, um, and, and that's, that, that's why money is feeding it right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the speculation layer, I think, exists in every market. Obviously, every yeah, and you can't, there's no way to get around it. Nope. Um, so do you, you know, uh, Brian Brooks of uh, Coinbase tweeted the following yesterday, and I was curious to get your thoughts. He said crypto is and blockchain is going to be Web 3.0. Do, do you agree with that statement? I don't know what he means by Web 3.0. Hmm. Um, you know, I see them in a very dissimilar manner, actually, like, like, I don't see one taking over the other. I see them, so, so, so here's the way I look at it. So the internet came along and it made information ubiquitous. Like that's what it really did. Um, what I did at CNET was create all these databases and open them up and, uh, and allow people to get content. And some databases I bought and some databases I created, um, but I, I had a, I had an area on the website for tech stocks and information. I worked with Bloomberg and opened that database up. And, and that's what Yahoo was doing. They're opening up all these different databases. So all of us were creating, were creating the ability to access information. So when, when Bitcoin came along, I, I saw this complement to this ubiquitous ability to send and receive information to this ubiquitous opportunity to send and receive money. And, and, and it is the two of those things that um, it is why I'm so interested in that. So, so I, I, don't, I don't see how, how it could be Web.30 when it has a very clear use um, that's distinct. Um, you know, blockchains are not good ways to move information. They're way too slow and they're way too expensive. Um, so, so, but they are very good ways of, of moving money. So, um, so, so yeah, I, I guess it's kind of a long-winded way of saying, I see them more um, as complements of each other rather than one ever replacing the other in, in, in any respects. Sure. Um, so I have to ask this question before we get into video coin. Um, and I, I, you may or may not be able to answer this. Uh, what do you hold in your crypto portfolio? Um, you know, I, I've never been, you know, up until recently, if I, you know, the money that people gave me for a whole, if I had not started the company and I just bought Bitcoin, 
and held the Bitcoin and not started the company, people would have been ahead, ahead for a long, long time because it was Bitcoin was like 40 bucks, right? Yeah. So I was trying to figure out how much people made by investing in the company. And up until, you know, until, you know, sort of um, up across the billion dollar mark, it actually would have been better to have just bought Bitcoin for everybody and, and, and have done no work and sit set by the ocean for, um, you know, for, for, for five years. Um, you know, I occasionally hold Bitcoin, but mostly um, it's just the tokens of the companies that uh, I'm involved in. And I'm not really a trader. I, I get too fixated. And so, you know, it's, it's like what I'm doing is, is everything to me. And, uh, and I have a hard time seeing kind of outside of that, um, seeing, you know, outside of it, it just, you know, whenever I'm trying to make something work, it has 100% of my attention. And, um, and so, um, so I, I, I never feel like I have enough information about anything else to really make a decision about, um, you know, holding other tokens. Sure. So let's talk about uh, Live Planet as well as Video Coin. Um, what's the relationship with Live Planet and Video Coin, and, and if you can give us an overview of you know how all, all of that works together? Yeah. So so I mean we're going to do some some branding work, but but basically Live Planet is just the company that that does Video Coin. Video Coin is is uh, you know a Cayman company. And then Live Planet is the company that's responsible for it's like Filecoin and Dat and something Labs. I forgot what the what the difference is. Um, so um, so we're going to try to put these together so that it's it's sort of less confusing for people. Um, but um, you know our job is to to build Video Coin uh, into into uh, a utility. Um, that has utility, um, and so, and so, you know, right now that's 100% solely focused on using this network we built uh, for video um, to do amazing things for all, all kinds of NFTs. I mean, we're really expanding the definition of what an NFT is. We're we're, we're in the process of doing that. Um, now, was the premise behind video coin that video consumption is on the rise and i think we we can agree on that it's been on the rise and a lot more brands are putting out video content the, the decentralized nature of the internet anyone can create a video now become a publisher uh content creator and so forth was that kind of the premise that you want to uh capture on this trend and this change in how content is consumed um, you know, ever since I produced five TV shows, I've always wanted to do something innovative in, in video. And um, and when we originally set out, um, our goal was to build infrastructure like um, uh, infrastructure, you know, like AWS, mm. but take advantage of machines that were all around the world that were zombies and weren't being used. You know, a lot of companies went to the cloud. And they left all these servers sitting in, in server rooms. And, you know, I ultimately realized, that, like, the big problem we had in Salesforce for the first three years was nobody would trust moving their corporate data into a website, which is the way they saw it. And uh, they didn't think it was safe. And so we got small companies, but it took until like 2004 for us to finally start getting big companies to, to trust us to do that. And that was a fight. I mean, it was a real, real fight to get there. And then I started noticing the exact same things around um, video coin, where uh, getting big companies to do it, they were just, you know, the idea of, you know, content that if it gets, you know, if it gets out into the wild, it will ruin their movie or ruin their TV show, you know, there's so much um, piracy that already goes on. Um, and the idea of that running in, in different uh, data centers than ones that are controlled, that was going to be a real fight. And, uh, and it was a fight, honestly, I didn't want to have. And so, <clears throat> and so when NFTs came along, 
you know, we saw a great opportunity to take advantage of all this video processing um, that we've created because we can do things with video NFTs that nobody else can do. Um, you know, we we call it NFT plus, but we we've to video we've added files and and graphics and text and audio. So it's a it's a container that allows you to put um, a lot of different stuff in there. But but you know one one big part of it is video, and we have the ability for you to be able to watch certain parts and not other parts until you buy it. And, you know. Um, and use DRM on, on um, you know, a lot of the different components. So there was a lot that we built, including the whole blockchain that we could bring over um, and work on the NFTs. And, you know, instead of trying to be, um, you know, this big company that competes with this really big company with people who don't really trust anybody new, um, the NFT market was, in my mind, a huge opportunity. And we could take all the development that we did and we could point it right at the NFT market uh, and move very quickly and be a very early uh, intro. So tell us about, um, for those who may not fully understand the concepts of NFTs yet, and even likewise beyond images going to video, <clears throat> what would be the UK use cases for some of these companies? Would it be previews to TV shows, movies, clips? And eventually you can buy and then, you know, sell the, that, that respective file or NFT, video NFT. Yeah, I mean, right now, most NFTs are graphics. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't even know if there are video NFTs out there. And if they are, they probably don't have DRM or some of the stuff that you need. So it can't be copied. Mm -hmm. um, so so we, we see, I mean, I'm just, you know, there's... Uh, you know, one of, one of our customers wants to do horse racing. And so, and so you can imagine um, when the Kentucky Derby is going on, you know, you, uh, or the, the period up to the Derby, you have a whole bunch of horses that are, um, that are on the Derby trail, right? And you can, um, and you can buy them and, um, <clears throat> and, in there have video images of when they were like, you know, a little foal running around, you know. Uh -huh. um, you know, you can have um, the, the sales booklet that it came out of, you know, you can put a lot of kind of content in there. Sure. And, and so it gives you like a, you know, it gives you a sense of ownership, you know, of, uh, over this, this horse, right? And then if the horse goes on and wins the Kentucky Derby, then everybody, everybody knows that horse. And then he wins the Triple Crown and, you know. So <clears throat> I see it as, you know, like dream cards, you know, like baseball cards, but applied to much, much more and much, much richer. And, um, and, I, and I think there are, um, I think there are, are a lot of use cases um, today that, um, I think there are a lot of use cases today um, where we're just kind of scratching the the, the surface. Um, so I think you know not only are digital items can digital items be NFTs. I think you can create NFTs for non-digital items. Like I buy a bag from Hermes and it comes with an NFT. You know that has a video of it. Um, so these are the kind of things that we're looking at and actually working on because we, we just think the um, we just think the the idea right now is is very very small um, in terms of how people are thinking about it. Um, but we think the, the idea is actually um, is actually enormous. So we think it's an enormous industry um, over time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and could you, could you name, if possible, some of the folks you're working with or maybe the industries they're in that you're looking to partner with? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're working with platforms that are um, either e-commerce pl platforms that want to give everybody the ability to create and sell NFTs, um, Formula One, um, as I said, um, um, uh, sports, 
um, horse racing, um, video games. Um, um, I'm, I'm sure there are more. I just don't. Uh, uh, and then, and then you know, and then also people who are um, you know looking to build. Um, so we're white label. So also looking to, to people who want to build their own. Uh, basically, either exchange or uh, marketplace. Um, wow. So, so yeah. So you know, I think in there will be um, will will be some um, some new exchanges that will emerge um, as a result of our technology. Like I said, I think it's really very early days. There are a couple of places out there. Um, there, the con- the depth of content is not very great. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we're one one hundredth of, of where we're going to be in three years. Sure. Um, so if you can tell us, I, I was reading on your website, uh, for video coin, where it says, uh, video NFTs for everyone through your integration with, with file coin. Yeah. So, so walk us through that. And, and are you using the same principles as file coin, but obviously it's more for video content. Um, the. The benefit of Filecoin is, first of all, uh, the cost. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a thousands of the cost of uh, putting it in AWS. <clears throat> so, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is because it's kind of this open source protocol, um, Filecoin will probably still be around in 50 years, um, kind of like the internet is. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you know, if I were to use Dropbox, now will Dropbox be around in 50 years? I don't know. So I think because Filecoin looks more like the internet than they do, you know, a it's an open source project, um, than they do um, a commercial provider. Um, we just think that it probably creates longer living NFTs and a big part of what we're about is making sure that um, that uh, these NFTs last. I mean, already there've been plenty of NFTs that have just been sold and they and they just disappear. They they they're not trackable anymore. Nice. <laughs> um, That's- sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, I just said that's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question for you. Do you foresee like there's going to be less text content on the web and more video as obviously internet speeds are faster, mobile phones, things like that. Uh, do you see just video taking over and maybe more audio as well? Well, yeah. I mean, right now, um, file storage is 6% of traffic and uh, video is uh, 75 or 76%. Hmm. So you know, I think that if you just look at traffic on the internet, right, and now we have 4K, and so more videos going to look like 4K. So, so the amount of, if you just look at the amount of video, it's going to keep going kind of straight up. Um, whereas text and graphics and that stuff, probably not going to have that same kind of, um, so from a technical standpoint, there's no doubt the video is, you know, going to be 95% of the internet in the next 10 years, right? Hmm. Uh, I mean, you think about doorbells and, you know, people, you know, I mean, I don't know how many cameras people now have in their house, right? So, so it's, it, it's really not going to become, I, I mean, if you want to talk about, if you want to talk about internet 3.0, internet 3.0 should be all that video. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, that that's what internet 3.0 is it's it's the text and graphics and all that stuff ir, ir, irrelevant um mm-hmm. to what is actually taking over the internet which is video wow. um so, so yeah i mean you know if there's going to be a 3.0 it's it's the it's the internet of video and um i mean with all these smart city projects or whatever i mean it's just the the amount of the video uh, is just crushing um and just again slopes like this sure um can you tell us about the uh, video coin token and how that works within the network yeah 
So, um, so it's done by staking. So the, um, um, the, the machines um, uh, that receive the most work um, hold the most tokens. Um, the problem we had to solve was if when you clicked on a file, we had to wait for the blockchain to run for the file was um, let go. I mean, it'd take you like three minutes or, you know, 30 seconds or whatever to, to get the file. So we needed a method where people would um, allow for the video, we could allow for the video to stream faster than the payments were happening in the blockchain. And so the way to do that is to make people put up money. And then if they do, or they're bad actors, they lose the money. But if they put up a lot of, um, if they put up a lot of, um, uh, a lot of money, then they they get more of the of the activity on the on on the network. So, so the token is a way of, of being compensated uh, for the actual hardware that's that's, uh, that's running. Very cool. Um... I have to ask, and, and you may not be able to disclose uh, as much because some of these things are probably under NDA and PR and so forth releases. Um, what's on the roadmap for the remainder of 2021 and maybe early 2022 that you can share with regards to video coin? If any. <laughs> um, we have a lot, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, have, we, have a, we have a lot. I mean, video coin... Um, has now become honestly one of my favorite projects of all times because we have a whole bunch of, of innovative things, including our own application that we're, we're going to launch. So, you know, I think we're, um, you know, we're trying to help companies come up with their own marketplaces. Um, and we, we, we really want to create a standard that's, um, that's more uh, robust, um, and that's uh, what we're we're calling NFT Plus, um, <clears throat> and we'd like to see that adopted so that people can take these NFTs and uh, um, with much more content and be able to to move them around. Um, you know, working with just a bunch of companies um, who. Um, a bunch of companies who um, are in many ways, it, NFTs are hard because nobody knows really what works yet, right? Sure. So, so if I back up, there are really three things that, that we're providing right now. Those three things are consultation about how to create NFTs and what, how, to, how to integrate them into your business. The second part is the full technology stack. The third part is payments. So if you launch a marketplace, we can actually give you payments right, right out of the gate. And, um, and so, so, that, so, so we want to be able to do all three of those things because we want to be a one-stop shop. You just come up, you, you know that you know we're out there and you know that we can basically do everything. So on the first part though, we don't ourselves want to actually become a consultancy. So we'll be making an announcement relatively soon about, um, about, about a large uh, NFT consultancy um, that's working with us because we want these large consultancies to know what can be to what can be built. Like we don't want them to look at open oh, say your you know we don't want them to look there and think that that's the full capability because we have this where you know we we can have all forms of media in a container and then that's what we want kind of the industries to support. Um, so so working with people who are trying to figure out. Their, and their NFT strategy. So kind of at the very front end, um, there's a lot of that going on um, just because it's, it's all so new. Um, and, um, and, then, and then on the tech stack side, you know, 
allowing people who, um, who want to sell NFTs off their own website to be able to do that. So making sure that that's really turnkey. Um, and so our uh, beta is coming up, uh, I think in three or four days. So, so we will we'll basically have all of that technology in, in beta and then we're about a month away from launching it. So, so really turnkey, you know, you use your website and, uh, and be able to sell stuff. We're gonna make that really easy. Um, and then the third is payments. Um, and I launched a payments company called Public Mint uh, a long time ago so that video, so that the video coin could allow for fiat-based payments. In other words, when Fox bought capacity on the video coin network, they could pay in dollars. And those dollars could flow mm -hmm. through the system and to all of our stakers, they could get dollars. And so so that's called that's called public demand, and that gives us a um, um, and that gives us the ability to bring payments into um, and uh, you know I mean our, our our biggest issue right now is you know we're just starting to do um, you know we're just starting to outreach and uh, and get publicity um, you know we just started that about a month ago um, is you know letting the world know that we can do all three of these things. And that, and that in the technology stack, um, we can actually broaden your horizons for, for, for what's possible. So there are, you know, there are different kinds of, of announcements. There are announcements of customers who want to use it. There's an announcement of e-commerce platforms that we're going to be on where everybody on the e-commerce platform can actually um, use us. Um, it's going to be um, announcements <clears throat> around people building their own, um, you know, building their own um, marketplace. Um, and so I, I think right now we've got kind of the full spectrum of um, capabilities that we're engineering against. Um, and so you know, like with these exchanges, you know, we're trying to work with companies because we don't really want to go do the front end part of it ourselves. So, you know, either the partner company kind of does that or we find somebody that, that does that because we're really building all the infrastructure for the, the, the minting and moving and et cetera, um, DRM of the, um, um, as opposed to being kind of a front end web, website. Um, so, or partnering with people to do is kind of front-end website development. Because all we're doing is just we're trying to make it easy. It's just like what I did with Uphold. I just want to make it easy, you know? And when you make it easy, you get a lot. Anything you make easy, you get a lot more of. Um, <clears throat> and so that's kind of been our whole approach um, to NFTs. And, you know, we... <clears throat> kind of got everything pulled together about a month ago. And then, then we've now um, been starting to reach out to people um, and, and let them know that we can do this kind of A to Z um, development um, so that if you're, um, you're a company and you don't, don't know how NFTs um, um, matter to you, that we can help you answer that question. The, the question, the answer the question may be no, mm. um, but but uh, but people need the the ability to um, go to somebody who can help them arrive at that decision. Um, so so we're like I said, we're we're starting to work with uh, consultancies um, who are are thinking of ways to to do it and. I think we announced a large one this week or next week, <clears throat> but um, so it's a, it's a pretty full spectrum of of the kinds of things that people are are doing with NFTs, and and we have our own, our own app that we're launching, which is which is really really cool. Um, um, so and it's, it's different from from all of those things. Um, so it's just built on our platform. <clears throat> so I'd say we have a fully pretty full deck between now and, uh, and the end of the year um, as the platform moves towards 
um, uh, being completed. That's exciting. Uh, I certainly want to try out that feature on my website. You know, with it, obviously you can build your own marketplace, the e-commerce aspect of it. And like you said, it's turnkey. And certainly it can see a lot of brands, a lot of different um, companies building video NFTs and, and obviously the trends we've talked about. So that is exciting. And I, I certainly want to try it. Myself. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I mean, like I say, the, um, so so when we integrated into e-commerce platforms, but that's a that's a different kind of thing. That's like you're, you're one of the customers of the e-commerce platform, and we just become an, an app that you can use. Sure. Um, but then, um, but then the the software um, we've now open sourced that. Um, you can play with that, and I'm sorry, open sourced it, but but uh, but it's also now in beta, so people can start kind of playing with that and. You know, that has capabilities like being able to create an auction and, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's not the full front end, but it's all the back end stuff that you need to do in a T plus. Um, so, you know, I think when that when that's, I mean, the software is never complete, but I think when the, the, the final out of, that, out of uh, uh, beta version comes out, I think it's going to be, I think it be pretty popular. Very cool. Um, I want to transition um, to the crypto market as a whole and talk a bit about that and get your thoughts. Um, do you feel we're still in a bull market and do you have a Bitcoin price prediction? No, I, I definitely don't. <laughs> I, definitely, I definitely don't. Um, you know, I just think over time, the price of co coins is going to have to start getting more uh, connected to utility. Um, and there's a, there's a real cognitive dissonance um, between coin, the part, people are actually doing stuff and, and, uh, and, and people who aren't and the value of the tokens that they hold. Sure. That's not very well connected right now. Right. Um, and, and, and people sort of, uh, I mean, people take advantage of it by kind of creating, you know, false PR events and all kinds of stuff. And the industry sort of rife for that. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen like tomorrow, but I think over the next five years, I think just things start working. Um, more things start working. I think people are not going to have quite the, the tolerance for things that, um, claim to have great utility, but don't ever develop it, um, but still have a massive market cap. Um, yeah, so I mean, essentially you, the market is gonna mature and we're actually gonna have to see utility and go beyond just speculation, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah it, it's, it's almost like uh, the first phase before the, the 2000 dot com crash where pets.coms of the world and some of these sites are gonna go away, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's interesting because, I mean, we have amazing technology. We have uh, amazing, amazing management team. We have an amazing opportunity. Um, but our token's like number 400, mm. you know, and, um, 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 you know, we're going to we're going to work with a, uh, you know, a token marketing team to kind of help us. But that's totally different from actually building out your business and getting customers. And those two things aren't connected. And, um, and, and that, was, that was true because in the bubble, I built a NASDAQ 100 company. So if you think about that, in the bubble in the late 90s, nobody was making money. Hmm. Nobody. And, uh, and a lot of Amazon, when I left, was losing a billion dollars a quarter. Wow. And I was with Yahoo. They were the only two companies that were in the NASDAQ 100 that were on the internet. And honestly, my company would have been worth a lot more if I wasn't tied to earnings and I was tied to histrionics. I was tied to making claims about all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Um, and so <clears throat> I had this very difficult task of kind of building a real company but having to be out there kind of waving my hands, you know, at, at the same time. Um, I had to build something real 
you know, underneath, um, you know, a lot of unreality that, that was that was going on. <clears throat> so I think it's kind of the same now. You know, I think that I think I think that there really are two things that you do. One is you build something, and the other is that you 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 know you wave your hands a lot and you make sure that everybody knows you know who you are and. Um, and you have to do both because it's not um, it's not it's not good enough to, to do just one. You can't just wave your hands and not build something real, and you can't build something real and then nobody knows about it, you know. And um, you don't reward the people who um, you know see your vision in your project and sort of under, understand where it's you know where it's going. Um, <clears throat> so, you know. Uh, hopefully in the next kind of like three months we're sort of bringing all these different pieces together and and being much more um from a marketing standpoint like your question earlier who's live planet who's video coin we're really just video coin got it so as as a you know a company building uh we're still very early but in the united states there seems to be lack of regulatory clarity there's still some in fighting among regulators, SEC, FTC, there seems to be overreach, lack of understanding. Uh, the likes of Ripple is getting sued over XRP. What are your thoughts, um, given that you're on the building side, and where do you, do you see light at the end of the tunnel? Let me just see if I can find something that I can just go over with you. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the SEC is, <clears throat> is, is spending time trying to regulate these things, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just go back to history, okay? And let's let's talk about the, the the actual real frauds that have gone on, okay? That they didn't do anything about. Yeah. So so um, Wells Fargo creating fake accounts went on for like a decade. Yeah. Um, millions and millions and millions of accounts. Tons of money goes went out of people's accounts because they got they were um, they were. Um, <clears throat> they were opened up without their um, like 10 years. What, where, where was the SEC? Um, rigging of the gold and, uh, and, and silver markets. Um, the, the biggest one, I can go into that, but, but bigger than that is the rigging of LIBOR. And LIBOR is the rate at which banks report that they lend to each other. <clears throat> Mm. And they all got together and they said, we're going to create a fake rate. And we're actually going to lend to each other at a different rate. And what that ended up doing, and you can go back and look, look at it. I mean, they, they were all hit with like $10 billion fines. Nobody was put in jail, by the way. Right. And that, that led to tens of billions of dollars more money paid out on credit cards, paid out on home loans, paid out on car loans. <clears throat> their ability to to rig that and 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 raise that rate um, basically created you know a, a follow through effect of tens of billions of dollars and this went on for like a decade and like where 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 was the FCC um, th then in two thousand eight right for a decade the industry was creating fake home loans. Yep. Totally fake. Everybody in this industry knew they were fake. And, um, and when that went down in 2008, it took the world down. Like it didn't take some banks down. Well, every bank was basically bankrupt. Um, and you, me, and a lot of other people, we all paid to get them out of what they did. Yep. Of course, nobody, nobody went to jail. <clears throat> that was the Great Recession. So the SEC not doing anything, okay, literally destroyed the world economy. Hmm. It bankrupted tens of millions of people. It bankrupted governments. Um, and it literally brought the globe to its knees. Where was the SEC? Where was the SEC when that, when that was going on? So now there are these things called ETNs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can look them up. Um, they are um, they are um, fake. Um, they they're supposed to track different exchanges uh, and funds, 
um, but there's no underlying asset underneath them. And the way they get priced is the bank prices it itself. So it's possible that if you, you have a uh, tech stock EPN and the tech stocks go down, um, that you lose and the people who have shorted it, they also lose too because the bank, because the bank, bank is setting the rate. So this is like a Bernie Madoff thing that's going on today. Okay, and, and, and people are losing. I mean, the, these things are designed mathematically for people to actually lose all their money. A common trick that they use is you pay $10 for it, it goes down to three, then it goes back up to 30. How did it go back up to 30? Well, they did a, they did a 10 for one um, uh, buy-in. So for every 10 shares, you know, there's now one, so it goes up to 30. So it's faking people out. This is going on today. Today, this is, this is going on. And at some point, at some point, there, there are already whistleblowers. They, they've told the SEC about this. They know it's going on. They know people are, are, are losing, you know, all of this money. And, um, and, th and they're doing nothing. They're coming over, they're coming over to talk to us about, you know, about $10 million, billion dollars that's sitting in, you know, yeah, I mean, I mean they're, they're worried about, you know, stable coins that are, you know, by and large, perfectly fine, certainly better, better than, um, than, than ETNs. So, <clears throat> so the whole sort of, um, 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 JP Morgan kind of created this fake sort of gold um, uh, uh, bond that was supposed to track the price of, of, of gold. And so in 2018, in two days, uh, more gold was traded because these are fake securities. It just like says, we're gonna follow the price of gold, maybe. Um, in two days, more gold was traded than was mined over a year, in over a year. <clears throat> Um, 34 uh, tons of gold was delivered that year through future contacts. So 34 tons, but 260,000 tons was traded on a single day. Hmm. So, so you're creating these things that, that you know, you, they're, they're just, they're just, you're just counting on a bank to give you the right price relative to, to gold. And of course, um, you know, in that particular case, the federal prosecutor in New York uh, jumped in and was named, J.P. Morgan in 2019, was named a criminal enterprise. Hmm. No SEC. That was, that was New York. That was the, um, um, <clears throat> so th that, was, that was New York that came in um, and, uh, and, and actually did the job of the SEC. So <clears throat> it, it, I find it very upsetting that the SEC is wasting any time on this innovation when they are allowing just massive fraud to go on and they know it's going on. And they, you know, they make everybody look over here at crypto while unbelievable stuff is, is, is going on in the, in the, real, in the real world. And, and do, do you think that's a, look, I, there's certain commentary about potential conflicts of interest, Jay Clayton, William Hinman, different things happening there. Is this an old guard thing fighting the new innovative disruptive technologies? Is that part of it? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, these ETNs in one, two or three years, okay, they're going to be everywhere. You're going to hear about them in the same way. The NTM thing may be bigger than the whole um, uh, than the whole real estate uh, induced bond bubble. Wow. So, so that you know they're allowing all of these fake instruments that are supposed to track something, but 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 they, they don't have anything in them. They just you know, the bank just says we will track this for you. Well. What control do I have over that? And so these ETNs are just wiping people out because they are literally mathematically designed to have you have no money at the end. And the SEC understands it. So I think if you look at all of these things that have happened over time and 
<clears throat> and, and you look at what the SEC has done and not done, they don't really follow the real criminal behavior. Like that's that's not what they get, you know, when when the when the global economy comes to its knees, then they go, oh, these mortgage loans weren't real. Oh, my God. I mean, when you bring the globe to its knees, you figure that out. Now they want to get hit of crypto. Hmm. I mean, it's absurd. And. <clears throat> it's utterly absurd, <clears throat> and, and 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 honestly, you know, my my comment, you know, when it comes to the the SEC is, why don't they deal with ETNs first and then come talking to us? Because they are <clears throat> there are tens of billions of dollars that are being stole stolen by people today, and the SEC is doing nothing, and they have whistleblowers. Do Do you think um, the solution here? would be Congress needs to step in and change the laws or put the SEC in their right place as it relates to crypto? They should just get the SEC to do their job. Hmm. I mean, I mean. Well, but, but don't you feel there's a bit of, when you say yes, to do their job for sure, but Gensler is asking for more power to regulate crypto. So would Congress need to be the stopgap there and say, no, no, okay, you're not doing that. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, obviously, the SEC is totally ineffective, mm. right? I mean, anybody who's been around for 20 years knows the SEC is totally ineffective. So why would you give them more power? Mm. Why would you ever give them more power? Yeah. They, they, they have never once used it to solve a real, real problem. <clears throat> so you're taking probably the worst run government institution in the history of the United States, and you're giving them more power. And you're giving them more power to regulate innovation. Yeah. I mean, call, call me crazy, but but you know, the military works, they do good, they do good jobs, right? School systems both basically work. The SEC, with that kind of record, the, wor the pr probably the worst institution in terms of its track record in the history of the United States and maybe the world. Hmm. Maybe the world. <laughs> and so you want to give them more power? They should go solve the ETN problem right now, where billions of dollars are being stolen from people. They have whistleblowers. They know what's going on. <clears throat> and when they go stop billions of dollars being taken from, from unwitting um, investors, then they can come back around. And focus on us, but you know, until they actually deal with the real problem, um, we're not a problem. We're not a problem. We're innovation. Yeah, some makes it goes up, some goes down, some gets lost. There are all kinds of things that happen with innovation. <clears throat> people lose money with innovation. That's what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> some people make a lot of money with innovation. That's happened. That that that's that's at the heart of innovation. Right. And so, and so, for them to want to regulate innovation is just a staggeringly bad idea. And and I certainly hope that that Congress. I mean, particularly now, we need innovation more than anything. I mean, wh why should we walk in China's shoes? You know, I, I mean, does our government really want to do the exact same thing that China just did and regulate the industry? I mean, isn't that why we're? Isn't that why? In America, we can go take chances, take risks, go out and do stuff. I mean, isn't that kind of fundamental to what America is about? And then for, for the SEC, who's the single worst organization ever in the history of the government, for them to want more power to regulate the only real innovation going on right now that I can see is astoundingly stupid, just astoundingly stupid. And um, but like I said, I think they're doing it because, you know, they would be forced to do other things like ETNs um, that would, you know, step on the toes of the people that they hang out with. Mm. You know, I mean, there's, there's a reason why these things go on for decades and they don't do it. OK, right. it's 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 not that they don't know. 
They have to know. Yeah. They're not that. They're not that stupid. So, <clears throat> so you know, I mean, did the whole world have to be brought to its knees before people figured out these home loans were fake? I mean, could the SEC have just figured that out themselves? They're a huge organization. I mean, did we really need the whole world to die for the SEC to? So, so you know, one of the worst ideas that I've ever heard is taking the, the worst institution in the United States in terms of, of its tr track record and giving them power over innovation. Right. Um, so where do you see the crypto market in five years from an adoption standpoint? A any predictions on your end? And not price, but rather, you know, utility adoption and things like that. Well, I mean, I think there are opportunities for, um, for utility. Like, I, I think we're a great example of that. Um, so, so <clears throat> you know, I can't sort of know what I don't know. Um, but I, do, I just do think there is this going to be this um, aligning of business and activity and potential with token price. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's very out of, out of line now. You know, there are a lot of projects that have not delivered and, um, you know, the tokens are, you know, multi-billion, you know, dollar. Um, and um, like we said, I'm, I, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, you know, it's, um, it's what happens when you have uh, lots of innovation. Um, but innovation works best when money aligns with the best actors. Um, and that, that's when it becomes, when that's when you, the industry and society gets more out of it, when the money is aligning with those people who are doing real things, not hand-waving things, but, but real things. So I'm hoping in the next five years, you know, we're looking at a top 100 tokens and all of them there um, have a message about what they're actually doing. You know, like a real world message that, hey, we're, we're doing this, we're contributing this, we're, you know, this much sales is going, you know, they, they can actually back those numbers up with actual real world performance. And uh, I don't think it's going to happen in three years, but I think it happen in five years, but it's definitely going to happen. Uh, I want to wrap it up here with some quick rapid fire questions, such as what's your favorite food? Oh, ice cream, undoubtedly. <laughs> uh, favorite musician or band? Oh my God. I, I like so much. I, 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 I kind of like everything. <laughs> I mean, I really, I don't, I, I don't have, uh, I don't, well, you know, I saw the Rolling Stones on TV last night. They're back touring again. Oh yeah. The, the, if the Rolling Stones can go tour <laughs> when they're all like 87 years old, they're my band. <laughs> for sure uh favorite movie uh, uh what have i just watched um yeah i'm terrible at these um let's see can i come up with one or not i just watched full metal jacket actually it's a good movie uh, that was a very good movie it's topical because i just watched it but that was a really good movie um favorite book Um, probably the encyclopedia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't, I don't ever read, uh, fiction. I only read, um, I only read nonfiction. Um, so, you know, I'm always in, um, uh, you know, I'm always trying to learn about, uh, saying, I'm always trying to learn about, um, you know, about things. I, my my re most recent book I read is called Lifespan, which is, which is a very interesting book. I mean, I'm 56 now, but a very interesting book by, uh, by uh, a Harvard PhD, Dr. David Sinclair. It says that basically we don't really have to die. Like if, if, we, if we treat old age like a sickness and there are certain things we can do, um, we can live to be 150. Now, I don't know that I want to live to be 150, but I know I want to live to be 80, and I, and I don't want to be like, you know, 
you know, on eight different kinds of medications and with a stroller, you know, I want my life to be as long as it is comfortable. Right. Uh, and finally, you know, what do you do for a hobby as uh, what's your favorite pastime? Well, I mean, I've got seven kids. Um, so that ends up, but, um, but probably because my kids are doing it now, um, actually, um, I'm, I'm playing a little bit of tennis and I'm playing a little bit of golf because I have kids that like tennis and kids who like golf. So they, they kind of frame what I get to do, but it's okay. We have a lot of fun. Well, Halsey, it was a pleasure chatting with you, and I'm excited to see the new updates uh, being released for Video Coin. Excited to try it out myself, and uh, certainly would love to have you back on as things progress. So, but thank you so much. Yeah, for today. yeah, love to. Anyway, thanks so much for having having me on. I really appreciate it.